Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley, and today we are here to discuss The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 13, the final part of this dreadful reunion. Thank God, because I could not have gone another Sunday watching this crap. This has to be the worst reunion in Housewives history. I don't understand why Shamia was there. Shamia brought absolutely nothing. She said a total of maybe six or seven words. I don't want to see Shamia back in any capacity for season 14, okay? Even though she probably will be standing by her BFF side regarding her new engagement to a married man. But I digress. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Shut up! It's <laughs> so, let's just hop right on into this recap because we don't have a minute to spare. So we start off this reunion with Bolo Court and Kenya's investigation. Andy goes on to ask if there was any discussion about what was off limits the next day. Portia goes on this soliloquy about how they want to have a good time and get loose and have a good old time and how Bolo couldn't really show his penis while the cameras were filming. And so that was the reason why they wanted to cover all the cameras and just set production on their way home so that they could really get down and party. Then Andy reads a viewer's question asking, did the ladies really think that this wouldn't be filmed? Portia goes on to blame it on the alcohol and Kenya and Marlo are like, girl, knock it off. Like we have all gotten drunk before and we still remembered what happened and what we did. And I was like, this girl can't take accountability for anything. It's always someone else's fault. It's always some reason of why she did what she did. She can never just own up and just be like, you know what? I did it. She is no lightweight when it comes to alcohol anyway. So I know she can throw quite a few back and be just fine and wake up knowing full well what happened. So Portia, again, enough with the foolishness and the lies. But sis, you just lie so damn much. You just can't help yourself. But I digress. Andy goes on to ask another question about why did Kenya feel the need to address what happened? Kenya lets it be known that at the end of the day, while they were having a good time and on vacation, this was still a work trip. Kenya also lets it be known that it wasn't like she was the only one talking about what went down. She talks about how Tanya went in Cynthia's room talking about, we can't tell anybody what happened last night. She even talks about how Drew went in Cynthia's room talking about what happened. Well, does it though? Yeah, I think so. So she's like, it wasn't all me. Like everybody else was talking about it. So, you know, why can't I talk about it? Kenya also lets it be known that had the shoe been on the other foot and she was the one with Bolo, that they would have been roasting her and dragging her for Phil. And she says, they were already dragging me over a crab cake. And while people want to act like, no, nobody would have cared. That's not true. Portia would have been in all her glee spreading it around that Kenya had opened it up for Bolo. We know it. She knows it. Her stands know that Portia would have been having a field day and have been doing the same thing, if not worse, had Kenya been in there with Bolo. So now the topic of Candy being put in the mess gets brought up and they let it be known that Candy's room was next to everything that was going on. So Candy heard all of it and she knew everything that went down. Marlo goes on to say, and Candy told me what happened the next day. 
You can tell that Candy is visibly annoyed that Marlo just blurted that out because we know how Candy is. She's too worried about staying neutral and trying to not step on anybody's toes and trying to straddle the fence. And I hate folks like that. It's one thing to be objective and it's another thing to never have a stance on anything. Like there comes a time where you have to say, look, this is what happened. It is what it is. Let's call a spade a spade. And Candy has a hard time doing that because she's so worried about someone being upset with her. It's like, girl, just admit it. Just admit that you told Marlo what happened. It's not that big of a deal. Marlo then goes on to take it a step further and makes it be known that they are all sitting in a dungeon right now because of Portia's lies from season nine. And we all remember that whole mess. And in all seriousness, Portia should have been fired along with Miss Phaedra because Portia was equally just as wrong for partaking in such an evil act. I always thought that Portia should have been gone off the show seasons ago. I never thought that she brought that much. After Cordell divorced her, I was like, okay, um, she's a little boring, but folks swear that she can carry the show on her back. And I'm like, we must be watching a different program because absolutely not. But again, I digress. <laughs> so of course, Portia has to turn that statement into a moment and she gets up and starts parading around like, me? This is all because of me? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And she's doing all that. Andy finally tells her to sit down. It was like she always has to do anything in her power to deflect. So anyhow, the season nine lies get brought up. Kenya starts saying, it is because of you and your lies. Portia gets angry and snaps back with, you know, your whole marriage is a lie. And I was really annoyed that Kenya did not get on her. I was like, girl, get her. Like I said in the last few recaps, I was really upset at how subdued Kenya was this entire reunion. She was not giving what the girl said she was supposed to have gave. Shout out to Rolling Ray. So now Andy reads a viewer's question asking why Kenya was trying to slut shame Portia. Kenya says, I was not trying to slut shame her. And also I was only investigating because she had called me a liar and I am not a liar. And she even points out how Portia has slut shamed her in the past and called her a prostitute quite a few times. Of course, Portia can't own up to it like the clown that she is. So she starts talking over Kenya and it's like, but sis, let's roll the tape back because you, along with Phaedra, were calling Kenya every single whore and every single name in the book. Y'all called Kenya everything but a child of God when that whole Apollo mess happened. And it was so funny for Portia to keep deflecting and then saying, why do you care so much? Why do you care so much? If only you were this obsessed with your marriage. It was like, okay, sis, but if only you were obsessed with getting some self-esteem, then you'd be off in a better position and not chasing married men who have a little bit of something around town. And it's really annoying that production cut out so much this season because the only reason why Kenya was a dog with a bone about the whole Bolo situation was because Portia behind the scenes was threatening to sue Kenya. So now Candy interjects and brings up how season nine is still a touchy subject. While Candy's saying that, we see Portia's face turn. She's rolling her eyes, looking up to the ceiling. She just looks so dismissive and just so annoyed already. Candy then goes to say that she will never not feel some sort of way every time she thinks about what happened. And she has every right to feel that way. Portia and Phaedra went around town and went to the group spreading such damaging lies that could have destroyed Candy's career, her whole entire livelihood, her whole entire life. I mean, her whole fortune could have been stripped away. She could have been investigated. All her businesses could have tanked. Like she could have been in some deep mess. And for 
Portia to sit up there with her pea brain, all dismissive and acting like, well, you know, I can't believe y'all want to bring this up and condemn me. Like, really? Like, I thought that me and Candy were good. I already apologized. And it's like, that's not how this works. How dare you act like just because you gave a measly apology four years ago that that covers all wrongdoings. Candy still has a right to be upset. And quiet as it's kept, I can hold a grudge till the end of time. Had Portia done some mess like that to me, Portia would not only not be on this show, Portia would not even be able to say hello or goodbye to me. She would be getting my ass to kiss every time I saw her. Let's be clear. Candy, although she is not my favorite by any means, I have to give her kudos for being able to be cordial and being friendly and even considering being a friend to Portia again after all that, because I could not do it. I know a lot of people would have gone oops upside Portia's head a long time ago for doing something as heinous as that was. So Andy brings up the whole scene when Candy was gossiping about what happened with Bolo to Don Juan. And he asked Portia how she felt when she saw the scene. And she's all pressed, talking about, well, you know, Candy don't owe me nothing. I was like, well, you know, girl, I guess if that's what you want to do. And it's like, girl, but you did worse spreading vicious lies about somebody that could have harmed them. You'll be okay if somebody gossips about you for a few seconds. <laughs> so now we move on to the... $64 million question, and that is who leaked the story to page six? So Cynthia says, it wasn't me. Kenya says, I don't know why they keep saying it was me. Like I have no relationship whatsoever to page six, okay? They have said some really awful things about me. I would never call them up. Then Andy goes on to ask about the status of Kenya and Marlo's friendship. Marlo says, we're cool. We're not besties. I haven't been to her house since taping wrapped. Kenya lets it be known that she has been invited to her home. So that's on Marlo for not coming. Andy then goes on to ask if Kenya trusts Marlo. Kenya says she does. She likes that Marlo is a straight shooter. Even if Marlo's delivery is harsh and somewhat blunt, she will tell you how she feels and she's not going to lie to you. Andy goes on to ask Marlo the same question, and Marlo says no. And you could tell that Kenya was a little bit hurt by that. I would definitely feel some sort of way. I feel like if we're friends, right, I don't care about the tier of friendship. But I'm saying if we're friends on any level, I definitely have some trust. Like, I'm not going to be close to anybody that I don't trust. So I would be a little bit offended if I were Kenya to hear that she doesn't trust me. Like, excuse me, like, we've broken bread together. You've been to my house. Like, I would just have an issue with you saying that you don't trust me. That's just me. But Marla goes on to say that she's an Aquarius. She doesn't trust anybody, to be honest with you. This is no shade but I want Marla to go and seek some help. It's clear that she hasn't gotten past a lot of things that happened to her in her early years, and she still carries this is me against the world mentality around, and that's just not healthy. And I'm not even here to psychoanalyze anybody, but Marlo really carries a lot of childhood baggage with her. Like, it's just a lot. Like, she doesn't trust anybody. Like, she can be really vicious when she's upset with you. But again, I digress. Andy then pivots the conversation and goes on to ask if anybody has heard from Tanya. It is crickets, okay? Because the way Tanya said, shout out to everybody, I had fun. <laughs> oh! <laughs> shout out to everybody, I had fun. I gotta be good. <laughs> 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 nah, I forgot. PM, to be good dot, dot, I'm out. They, this they bitch. Told me to be <laughs> Once that Bolo episode aired, and it was found out that she was in that room doing a little something, something 
with her best friend Portia and Bolo, she hightailed it out of there because supposedly her man slash life partner slash forever fiance, Paul, is worth a hundred million dollars. So she's not trying to screw up that bag by any means. Portia gives this really weak response about how she still talks to Tanya, they're still friends, and she's loyal to Tanya. So now we get on to one of the craziest segments in this reunion, and that is Drew and Latoya's fallout over the baby blessing and profit lot. Andy goes on to ask Drew, what does Prophet Lot and Latoya's relationship have to do with you? Why does that affect you and your life so much? Drew says that before she answers that question, she needs to pray about it and ask God to guide her because she doesn't play with her spirituality. I said, girl, if you don't sit your narrow behind down, then I know something. Drew is such a loser, it don't make no type of sense. I could have hit the floor. Kenya was absolutely right when she said, girl, this is absolutely blasphemous that you're putting the Lord in this mess. Drew needs her behind whoop for that. I was like, why are you involving God. I'm so tired of folks putting God in every single sorry thing that they involve themselves in. God has nothing to do with this whole mess, Drew, and you know it. So after Drew gets done praying a prayer that didn't even go past the ceiling, she goes on to say that other prophets had discerned that there was some foolishness in the midst. I was like, girl, what? I said, girl, what are you saying? Like, what is coming out of your mouth right now? Latoya interjects and says that her and Prophet Lot had a spiritual relationship. That's it. That's all. And she still does not understand why Drew is so pressed and so bothered by something that has nothing to do with her. Prophet Lot is a grown ass man who can make his own decisions. So why Drew is so up in arms makes no sense. So then Andy makes a joke about how this whole thing caused a ripple in the Prophet community and everybody is cracking up like, Andy, you are a mess. So then Latoya makes a joke about um, the holy drip. And so Andy's like, not the holy drip. And so they're all laughing about that. Candy says that she hates when people use religion to explain behaviors. She says that Prophet Lot is a grown man and he's a single man and he could do what he wants and what he does should have no bearings on Drew and her family. So then Andy brings up Drew's receipts at Cynthia's friend Miss Party when she had them listen to that tape cassette of a recording of Prophet Lot. So Andy reads her and is like, sis, if you're going to be a housewife, you need to deliver your receipts a little bit better than that. It was so crazy to me how Drew was sitting up there trying to justify her actions. Instead of saying, you know what, guys, I messed up with that one. I had no right to record this man and I made myself look like a true fool. She's sitting up there trying to justify it like, well, you know, I actually have more receipts and my receipts were actually right. Your receipts didn't prove a damn thing. That man is single as a dollar bill and he can do as he pleases. I really hit the floor when Drew started calling Prophet Lot a false prophet and started bringing up all of his transgressions. Like, make it make sense. So now we move the conversation over to the infamous cheap, gag gift at Cynthia's friend Miss event when they were doing that white elephant game. All of the ladies are like, Drew is dead wrong for that. Kenya says that Drew owes everybody a thousand dollars. Candy lets it be known that that was not cool whatsoever, that they were all supposed to spend a thousand dollars to ensure that everybody got a great gift. And what Drew did was not right at all. So, of course, Drew is sitting up there looking stupid and acting like, well, you know, um, it was supposed to be a funny gift and 
Um, I actually did spend a thousand dollars. It's like, sis, you're just gonna lie to the bitter end, huh? You know good and well you spent a total of thirty nine ninety four, and you're gonna sit up here and play in our faces and try to play on our intelligence by telling us that that pet carrier and that used wig cost a thousand dollars. The way I would have went upside Drew's head for that gift. Like I was just too done. And then when she kept saying, well, y'all took my champagne bottles. Y'all took my champagne bottles. Girl, absolutely. You were not supposed to walk out with any good gift while you sit up here giving some cheap $10 gift. Absolutely not. No, ma'am. I am so sick of Drew. That girl is just such a loser. She really is a certified loser. Like I just cannot stand her. I do not want to see her for season 14. And then when Latoya interjected and said that she would like to develop a relationship with Drew, I was like, girl, why? Latoya, girl, you better than me, honey, because I would have nothing for Miss Drew Sidora. Absolutely not. Especially not after she called me a Delilah. I don't think so. So now we're nearing the tail end of the reunion and Andy brings up a viewer's question about why can't Portia and Kenya bury the hatchet once and for all. This feud has been going on since they both stepped on Housewives. Portia says it is very unfortunate. Kenya brings up how she and Portia really did develop a friendship because her, Portia, and Shamia were pregnant at the same time. And she really um, was trying to move forward, you know, with them being friends. Kenya goes on to say that things went left again because she was really upset when she saw that bowling alley scene from last season air on TV. And it showed Portia and Candy making fun of her marriage. And Portia was really going in on Mark giving Kenya a hard time. Kenya was like, if you're my friend, why wouldn't you be concerned for me? Why wouldn't you call me up and be like, hey, like, are you okay? Is everything all right? Like, why would you get on TV clowning me? So Portia comes up with this convoluted answer saying that she did connect with um, Kenya last season when they were all pregnant together and had their daughters. But then she saw another side of Kenya, the old side of Kenya that she doesn't like. And she saw how she treated Marlo at Marlo's wig line when Kenya had brought um, the band, the marching band that said, Kenya, more hair care. And so she was like, she didn't like that. So Marlo's like, girl, that's a bold faced lie because when that happened, you were rolling on the floor laughing. So then Portia adds on by saying that she decided that she did not want to pursue the friendship with Kenya any longer. And in retrospect, she should have just called Kenya and told her, hey, I don't want to be friends with you anymore. But she didn't know how to do that. That's just so immature and so raggedy of you. And honestly, I don't believe that you didn't want to pursue the friendship with Kenya anymore. I think that you only did it to follow Nene because Nene had an issue with Kenya and they were on the outs. And since you are stuck up Nene's ass and you want to be a Nene Jr., you said, let me follow my big sis's lead and give Kenya a hard time and pay her dust now. Of course, since Kenya and Portia are getting into it, Drew just can't help herself. And she interjects by saying, Kenya, you know, I feel the same way. I feel like, to be honest, you never gave me a chance. And Kenya is like, Drew, is this what we're doing? So in the midst of all that happening, Shamia decides to say a few words about how she is not Portia's lapdog. Shamia said a whole bunch of nothing. And I was crying when Marlo said, yay, Portia's finally sticking up for her friend Shamia, woo! And when I tell you the way Marlo was reading Portia, I got my entire life. And I thought it was so disgusting of Portia to say, you need to go back to prison. Like who talks like that? You're such an activist for Black Lives Matter. Why are you wishing another black woman to go to prison? And the gag is that prison read isn't even a read. It fell flat, sis. Marlo was honest from jump that she had been to prison seven times when she first got on this show in season four. 
So now Marlo and Shamia leave the stage and now it is time for the closing remarks about what they've learned this past year. Everybody goes around the room saying something that they learned from this year, how life is short with COVID and the pandemic. So now the reunion is over and instead of a usual champagne toast, Andy brings out crab cakes for all of the ladies and Ralph is serving it to all of them. Child, finally over, okay? Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this recap. Thank you all for bearing with me because y'all know that I was a few days late with this child because you know I was on vacation celebrating my birthday, all right? <laughs> but anyhow, y'all, let me know what you all think down below. You already know what to do. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all later. Bye, guys.